Oh boy. I hate to say this as I don't even know if I'd say an ex Asmund Gold fan, like a like a self-hating Asmund Gold fan. I don't know what phrase I'd give to myself here. I like Asmund Gold's WoW content, and I, I definitely enjoy his content that doesn't get into politics and stuff, but ever since the Amber Heard Johnny Depp con like trial, his content has gotten to be such content mill right wing slop half the time at least that's made it impossible to watch it also doesn't help that whoever is editing his content making his thumbnails and his titles and descriptions for his videos and his main channel is probably like really far right uh he uploaded a video when we're about to cover um as our main way of uh of discussing this Elon unbanned a white supremacist, which is, of course, the main point and story of this, though we're going to view it through the, the lens of Asmongold's video covering it and talking about how people are handling the topic. Um, though Asmongold's editor wrote, mildly right-leaning political commentator Nick Fuentes gets unbanned on Twitter as the description. It's since been changed, the new title and description is Elon's controversial unban. Totally not far right commentator Nick Fuentes gets unbanned on Twitter. Um, the channel editor is apparently Cat Danny and a daily dose of Asmund Gold. So um, I know who Cat Danny is. They've been around for a while. And they've been around for so long, I don't know if they could be the person who's like the weirdo right winger. Maybe it's a daily dose of Asmund Gold who's the weirdo conservative. But regardless, um, Asmon ended up walking it back, or maybe the editors did, because it was a bad look. Um, but, like, this is a good example of why centrists tend to always end up benefiting the far right more than they could ever be politically neutral or, like, equally beneficial to either side or non-beneficial to either side. The fact is that those willing to do nothing when injustice takes place are always the most beneficial to the right because the right are naturally in favor of injustice. They work to preserve injustice, while the right or the left fights for a positive justice, which means apathy will always be those that fight to preserve injustice's best friend, but can never, you know, vibe well with those that try to fight against injustice. Um, in fact, if anything, people like Asmongold always consistently act as a roadblock, which is why... When Elon Musk announced that he was going to be unbanning possibly the most prominent neo-Nazi in America, Nick Fuentes, and Nick Fuentes, as he gets unbanned, announces that he's willing, he's excited to uh, to to make a new name for himself and allow his him to to speak and uh, create his own reputation and not what other people say about him. So, you know, maybe a whole new batch of Zoomers are going to get introduced to Nick Fuentes and they'll have no idea the shit he's said, done, or been involved with. And they'll be convinced that he's just some moderate, like, paleo-conservative right-wing, uh, you know, just-asking-questions little guy, you know? That's probably what he wants. That's definitely what he wants. He's fallen off over the last few years, so he's probably hoping this is going to breathe a lot of new life into his channel. And for an idea of how people are responding to this, you can look at the comments of Aswin Gold's video, and uh, they're not great. Free speech means hearing what you don't want from people you don't like. Hassan literally said America deserved 9-11. I am Indonesian, and even in my country, he would end up in jail for supporting terrorism, saying this about your country. Well, that's the First Amendment. You're allowed to say that because of the First Amendment, which is a good thing, I think. How can you say he is not radical? J.K. Rowling isn't more radicalized. She is still like she has always been. It's the movement she was a part of that went off the cliff and now endorses things J.K. Rowling despises. To be fair, there's a lot of black supremacists on Twitter, and I don't see a single one getting called out, let alone banned. This is the price we have to pay for free speech. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you simply reply to an Elon Musk tweet with the word cis man, your account will have a tag saying, for hate speech, this post has been suppressed. But this is the price we must pay for free speech, guys. By the way, hold on, let me test something. Okay, seems like you can type, you can post cis man without a problem. At least for now. I've seen several people simply reply cis man to an Elon Musk tweet and get in trouble. Let me see if I can find one of my favorite examples. 
Well, here's the announcement. Repeated or targeted harassment against any account will cause the harassing accounts to receive at minimum temporary suspensions. Obviously, harassment isn't, like, good. Sure, that's fine. The words cis or cisgender are considered slurs on this platform. Mind you, these are the scientific and medical communities terms for, um, uh, uh, like when you are not trans. This is not like a a derogatory phrase. It's just the word used for people who are not trans. Um, I believe it comes from, I believe it comes from chemistry and has to do with the fact that um, if you're like a cis. Some, I forget exactly how it works, but the prefix cis comes from when something is the same on either side of like a chiral bond or whatever. And then trans has to do with like when it's different or opposing. I forget. It comes from Latin or something. I, I don't. It's something to do with chemistry and it comes from chemistry and it has to do with like. I don't know. Trans means across, cis means same, Zan. Yeah, it has, but it comes from like the terminology being used for trans and cis people comes from chemistry. I, I forget the exact explanation. It's overly complicated, but it's not a slur and it's not ever had a derogatory, like, it's never been used derogatorily. Anyway, let's see how our favorite centrist uh, responds to the issue of the most famous white supremacist and neo-Nazi in America right now being unbanned personally by the world's richest man. So about, um, I'm trying to think about how many years ago this was. Five years ago, I feel. It was like five, like four or five years ago, 2000. Look how many people in Asmongold's chat are spamming America first in all caps. 21 says in a tweet. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I probably should have read that. And uh, anyway, so goldfish memory, completely contradictory statement, only two days apart. And then some uh, guy says, you work for Jews. And then Elon Musk responds to the accusation that you work for Jews by saying, while I don't condone the actions of one group, I must admit to being openly philo-Semitic. I don't know what that is. Uh, and generally Neither trying to see I. the good in all people. And then in a response to, to that, this guy says, bring back Nick Fuentes on Twitter. He's been banned since 2021. What happened to your promise, big guy? Elon Musk goes and says, very well. He Notice how none of these conservatives ask Elon why, like, your, like, tweets get shadow banned if you say cisgender. He will be reinstated provided he does not violate the law. Because they and agree let with him that. be crushed by the comments and community notes. It's better to have anti-whatever out there in the open to be rebutted than grow... It's better to have anti-whatever. He can't even say it, can he? Like, conservatives can't bear to say Nazi. Like, they can't. They can't admit Nazis are real. Because if they admit Nazis are real, they have to admit the guys with the Nazi tattoos, the swastika tattoos, and the Nazi flags chanting, like, about the Great Replacement are Nazis. That's them. And if they admit those are them, they have to admit they're friends with those Nazis. Mind you, look at that. Elon Musk follows Asmongold on Twitter. Obviously, we're never going to get an unbiased take from Asmongold about Elon Musk. Jesus Christ. Of course, Elon follows Asmongold. Oh, simmering in the darkness. And so it's looking like, uh, it's looking like Nick Fuentes is getting, uh, getting unbanned. And so this is what he says here. This will get enormous backlash, but if it's free speech platform, I think- The entire chat says W, Elon W. Uh, his entire chat. Like, Asmongold is the biggest conservative on tw uh, Twitch now. Um, most conservative streamers that were on Twitch moved to other platforms like Kick and Rumble. And so now, like, Asmongold is the conservative chat now. Like, you go to Asmund's chat to Nazi post and stuff. 
and post about America first and stuff. Weirdly enough, back in the day, Asmongold was one of the like only streamers that banned the tryhard emote because it was being used in a racist way. And when his fans tried to deny it, he was like, really? You guys are going to pretend like you don't know what you're doing when you spam that emote and when you spam it and why you spam it and how you spam it. Um, he used to be very like, like very clear about that stuff, but now his chat's full of like people America first posting. I guess he's fully drank the like freeze peach Kool Aid. I miss when everybody like realized that chanting free speech whenever somebody wants to get away with like any consequences for saying or doing an awful thing. Um, I remember I, I miss when everybody realized that was a stupid argument and says said freeze peach and made fun of that. But now we're back in an era where people fall for that same argument again. <laughs> Because, like, all the Zoomers from back then, all the politically disaffected teens have now gotten into politics on the right, and they fall for that same line of argument that they that we did back during the Gamergate days, you know? It's a whole repeat of history, like I said, would happen. It's the right move. I think that what Elon Musk wants to do is that he wants to... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, he wants to bring everybody back on Twitter so there's no longer an expectation that advertisers will have that content will be removed from Twitter. I think this is like a meta-level strategy. This is batshit insane logic. Okay, for one, Twitter has been continuously losing money in advertisers. It is not in any way recovering. It's continuing, continuing to bleed money. And d does Aswin go... What? The, the, in no way does this move help with advertisers. It's just as... Not Asmongold, it's just Elon. I'm, I'm so tired today. It's just Elon desperately trying to play to his sycophants. ...strategy that he has, where it's like basically it's I'm working. going to unban everybody. I'm going to not ban anyone. And so I think the goal is to normalize not expecting the, the platform to take an action to normalize that. So that way advertisers don't pull out every single time somebody has a bad tweet. I think that's basically what his strategy, what his like, what, what this is like his end game, right? Uh, Fuentes on Rumble openly asked for the total extermination of many ethnic groups uh, with the rhetoric that would make a Nazi blush. Well, it, he's not, guys, he's not calling for extermination of ethnic groups. It's of cookies, okay? Come on, you've got to get it right. And I think that this kind of stuff, I... I... Yeah, so I, I think Asmund Gold knows and, and is making fun of, of Nick Fuentes there. It, it, he's referring to the cookie analogy that, that Nick Fuentes did about how the Holocaust couldn't have happened. If you don't know what I'm referring to, then... I mean, you don't even need to know, but basically it's just Nick Fuentes doing the Holocaust denial, but he replaces Jews with cookies and uh, gas chambers with ovens, uh, like cookie baking ovens. And uh, yeah, it's 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 just a lot of Holocaust denial. Um, th this is, I don't think Asmongold himself has any confusion about whether or not like Nick Fuentes is a Nazi, because remember, Asmongold has debated Nick Fuentes. Um, like, he and Destiny debated Nick Fuentes once, um, and Asmongold does not agree with Nick Fuentes, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Asmongold agrees with Nick Fuentes. Asmongold does agree with Nick Fuentes having a platform, and a platform is all these people want or need, because with a platform, they can grow their power, and once their power has grown, they can affect real-world change, whether it be inspiring people to real-world violence, like the Christchurch shooting and countless other mass um, killings uh, committed after, like, with, like, manifestos written describing how they were inspired by far-right, like, online figures like Nick Fuentes, or simply just getting a bunch of people together to harass like, for example, Nick Fuentes and a bunch of grapers getting together to harass Ben Shapiro for being Jewish on the street. Like, they got around him and started, like, yelling at him because he's Jewish. Fuck Ben Shapiro and all, but, like, kind of scary that they felt comfortable harassing a Jewish man in the street and mobbing up on him. Like, a famous, wealthy, powerful Jewish man. They felt that comfortable. Yeah. yeah. I the, the fact is, once again, people like Asmongold will always serve the exact purpose they need to to people like this and will always act in opposition to the left, but they will continuously say, why does the left hate me so much? Why is the left so opposed to me when I'm just a politically neutral centrist? It's because their position naturally acts in opposition to the left while acting as a benefit to the right without realizing it. I do agree with Elon with the fact that it's better to have this kind of stuff out in the open because I feel like a really good example of this is Andrew Tate. I feel like after Andrew Tate got reinstated to Twitter, it became a lot more obvious that some of the things that he was saying were just fucking stupid.
And I think that the more that people actually see the opinions of anybody, the more that people can actually discuss what those opinions The fact is, this doesn't change anything. Andrew Tate's tweets still get countless likes. Th this changes nothing. What do you mean? That nobody did disliked Andrew Tate more after he got back onto Twitter. What are you talking about, Asman? Right, do you know how to use a fucking platform? Where's Where's the official Andrew Tate account? Is he on Twitter? Oh, he is. Here he is. Cobra Tate. His most recent tweet from 50 minutes ago is 6.3 thousand likes. From one hour ago, 6,000. An hour ago, 1.8. An hour ago, 1.7. Two hours ago, 2.8. Two hours ago, 1.2. Three hours ago, 10,000. Four hours ago, 3,000. 44,000. 10,000. 12,000, 3.9 thousand, 4.6 thousand, 8.6 thousand, and he's monetized. So the fact is, he's just been back, like brought back onto a platform where he's just now going to monetize his posts, which are going to get massively high engagement, especially when people disagree with them. Now, literally, the disagreement, the engagement, the argument, the free speech is literally nothing but a money racket for a neo-Nazi. Every person who disagrees with him is going to give him a view on Twitter that his Twitter blue is going to make him money for. Elon Musk has just provided the world's biggest neo-Nazi with a job, pretty much. Is that really... Is, is that really the kind of thing that we want to support, we want to defend? Like, w when I put it that way, does it make more sense to people, maybe? Why so many are against this kind of thing? Means are, and the validity or lack of validity of them, right? Not kind of true? Yeah, and so this is what he says. Uh, I believe Nick was also incredibly radicalized as a result of censorship. Well, I think a lot of people have that happen. Like, so, so what I think happens is that people might get kicked off of the platform. What? Nick Fuentes was radicalized by censorship? No. Nick Fuentes was streaming on YouTube to 40,000 people when he was doing the cookie analogy. He was not radicalized by censorship. None of these people have ever been radicalized by censorship. You get censored, quote unquote, for saying things that are quite fucking extreme. You have to have already been pretty radical to get censored, quote unquote, in the first place. Platform, or they get kicked off of like some group, or they get fired from a company, or they have something happen. Like most people get radicalized, not because of- Nick Fuentes started spouting Nazi propaganda online at like 15 years old or something. He literally started when he was in high school of reading online rhetoric, but because something happens to them in their personal life, that validates the online rhetoric that they were already aware of. So like, for example, um, you know, somebody, you know, has a bad experience with like a, a girl, right? And then they go online and they start looking for information about why girls are bad. Or, you know, somebody has a bad experience with uh, a True. black person. And then so they go online and they start reading information about that, right? Most people have the cookie quotes, then people take the quotes and make them. Yeah, so why should we encourage that information that they seek out to reinforce some bias they have in an emotional time. Because, like, guy gets, like, fucked over by a girl. Sure, for, like, a couple days he'll be mad about it. And then he'll get over it and, like, realize that anything, like, over the top he might have said about women at the time was, you know, just emotionally driven. But if that guy then stumbles across some incel forum that he starts frequenting, now that one moment of, like, emotional anger about women after a breakup or after getting rejected turns into a new lifestyle of browsing incel forums and learning a whole new philosophy about how you view men and women and how they should act in society. So why are you defending the people who those who those individuals then find to then build up their hatred of that group? An ideology? Oh yeah, of course, right? JK Rowling is a good example of radicalized by backlash. Her earlier tweets are pretty normal, but she got death threats. I think JK Rowling is a great example. Yeah, I, I think that's that's definitely a great example because like JK Rowling this is a fair point, actually. J.K. Rowling's original tweets were really out of touch and, like, cringe, and there was a fair amount of ambiguity about her position on trans people for a while, and it progressively got more extreme, and she no doubt got pushed in to the turf sphere, and after a certain point, it was like she kind of went over that waterfall, and there was no pulling her back. Um, the left does tend to have a little bit of a... of a, a, bit, a little bit of a non-Newtonian fluid aspect to it right like you almost become a part of the left without even trying or realizing it 
But if you try to insist you're part of the left and maybe you just have some ideas that don't exactly like uh, line up with everything that's expected, um, you're not going to be let in. You're not going to end up sinking into the left uh, like when you have some if you're not willing to completely submit and just sink into it. If you're willing to push back even a little, you'll hit the left like a brick wall. Uh, much like a non-Newtonian fluid. But if you're just some person discovering some progressive values through experiences or doing online research or just experiencing it like passively, learning about it passively, you kind of sink into progressive ideology like a like, like ooblek. You know what I mean? How do these lights turn off after I just re like extended their timer? Does the timer extension not even work? Do I literally have to wait till they turn off and then turn them back on? That sucks. ...was like... You know, she was basically saying, like, yeah, trans women are women, but they're not the same as, like, biological women. And people went absolutely fucking apeshit on her for that. Well, like, once again, though, there's a reason why people went apeshit. Why did J.K. Rowling feel the need to come out and say trans women aren't the same as biological women? Everyone knows that cis women and trans women aren't the same, as do trans people. The only reason someone would come out and say that is, like, to be rude to trans people, to like make a hot take about trans people and their like validity and their identity that's meant to offend trans people. Do, like, does Asmund Gold, does he believe that J.K. Rowling said that with no intent to offend anyone? Just, you know, just casually just saying, ah, yeah, trans women and cis women, they're complete, they're, they're different. And with no intent of hurting anyone's feelings, like that was just a... Just a, you know, casual, harmless tweet she made, not even thinking about it. No intent to, like, start a fire, get people talking, get people angry about that. Mm. I think maybe she was fishing for a bit of a response from the get-go, to be honest. Like, I mean, I'm talking, like, because before then, see, a lot of people might not remember this, but J.K. Rowling was, like, a super... Like, all the comments are spamming, like, the Chad, Tuxedo, uh, Pepe, and then Rowling. Omega Feminist. And, like, people would complain about this a lot on the internet back in the early days. And so as soon as this happened, a lot of people were like... J.K. Rowling was never a, a mega feminist. The left made fun of J.K. Rowling for the fact that after all the Harry Potter books came out and the movies came out, she started retroactively saying that every character, like, like a bunch of characters were gay or LGBT as a way to, like... Or LGB, I should say, not LGBT. As a way to, um... Uh, like retroactively make the stories more progressive and to fit like a narrative about her that does not exist. Um, and, and like people fall for it. Like n the people who were criticizing JK Rowling from the get go were lefties making fun of her for her faux progressivism with like make like fall, like retroactively making characters gay. And then conservatives who were burning the books because they were satanic, I guess. Like, ah, well, that's what you get, right? Because you port this audience, and then now they're turning on you. And uh, that's it. She's, she's still is a TERF. Uh, yeah, and TERF, for anybody who doesn't know, it's a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. It's a term that people use uh, for, uh, like, women that feel like uh, trans women aren't women, right? That's basically what's going on. And so I think what's happened in the process of that is that J.K. Rowling... My favorite thing about all of this as well is the TERF movement is, by and large, made up of the most hate man-hating women you will ever see. Like, the, the, the TERF movement is foundationally based in man hate the most overt and wretched man hate you'll ever see so it's hilarious when conservatives like this defend turfs um because if the, any of them if any of these dudes ever encountered a turf that turf would immediately tell them that like they wish their ex-girlfriend had killed them you know like i don't know if you guys know this but one of the turfs like biggest uh, idols is a woman named is it Judy Arias or something? Jolie? Jolie Arias? What's her name? Fuck. The the lady who who murdered that lady, Jody? Is it Jody Arias? Yeah, here she is. This is Jody Arias. There are different photos of her that go back a long way, so you're gonna see a lot of different images used but if you see a turf account like a really wretched turf account online um chances are they'll be using one of these images as a profile picture you might have seen the famous um 
JCS criminal psychology video that breaks down the interrogation and case of, J of Jody Arias. She is a woman who famously murdered a guy who rejected her, that she was obsessed, like she was obsessed with the guy. She was a literal fem cell. She was obsessed with the guy. The guy didn't reciprocate or like, I think had a one night stand with her. She got really upset and felt used and then went to the guy's house while he was showering and stabbed him to death, stabbed him to death took photos of his body and of the crime scene and then left, tried to play like the innocent victim and like cried in court, cried in the interrogations, tried to play an innocent victim, but was like provably the murderer, like caught on her photos that she took on her camera, murdering the guy. And these TERFs love her. They will use her as their profile pictures. They stand her and they view her as like their idyllic person. And if you're ever like a pro-trans guy, they will flood your replies with pictures of this woman and say she's coming for you or some shit like that. Um, because she's like their their queen serial killer, not even serial killer, murderer, like man murderer fem cell, right? So it's always funny that like at the end of the day, um, the things that these people advocate for will always be against their best interests, down to the point of defending people that hate them, you know? It's really funny stuff, really funny stuff. Anyway, Nick Fuentes is back on Twitter. I guess we're going to see some pretty wild shit come out of that, no doubt. He's get, no doubt going to immediately start Nazi posting overtly, and it's going to empower a lot of the other Nazi posters on the platform. I expect for the mask that, if you think the mask has dropped on Nazi accounts now, I ex expect every other conservative tweet on Twitter to just be dropping hard R N bombs from here on out now that Nick Fuentes is back. I think we're legitimately, legitimately going to enter, like, a serious era of, like, constant hate speech and slurs on Twitter to, to a degree you can't possibly imagine now that their king is back. Anyway, if you like this video, please consider dropping a like. Every single thumbs up basically acts as a cattle prod against YouTube to uh, push my content, my videos, and my channel out in the algorithm to more people, which means more subs, more new fans, more views, all that good stuff, and it really helps me a lot. So every single thumbs up, like, I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon to turn on all notifications so YouTube actually tells you when I go live or upload a new video. And of course, if you haven't already, please consider um, following my social medias, I'll link down below in the description. And of course, if you want to support me financially, please consider subscribing, donating, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or supporting me financially through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Patreon, or buying merch to the Streamlabs link down below in the description. As with all the rest, remember, I am a grassroots funded content creator, so your support is what keeps this channel going, and I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you haven't already, please consider joining my fan discord. The joining link is down below in the description. It's totally free and it's the main hub for my fan base where I do watch parties, game events, call-in streams, and I make all my announcements for my like my uploads and everything so you'll never miss any announcements or any like notifications. So uh, yeah, I hope to see you there and I hope you enjoyed.